everybody, and thank you for joining me today. I'm Alan Barry Labucan. I'm the CEO and president of Advanced Lithium. I'm also one of the large shareholders uh, combined between me and the uh, chairman. Uh, we have well, own well over a quarter of the company. Um, and uh, so uh, I wanted to talk to you today about lithium to start, and then I'll get into some of the specifics about what we're doing with Advanced Lithium. First of all, I'm very bullish on lithium. And I think, you know, it's pretty clear to most investors worldwide that we're going through an electric car revolution and transport for that matter. They're, in the future, I think you'll see uh, buses, uh, semi trucks, um, all uh, using electric or uh, being electric. What is not nearly as well known is where are they going to get the lithium from to power that electric car revolution? Um, in this, since early 2021 um, to today, uh, there was actually a report out that uh, now uh, lithium carbonate equivalent is at over uh, $50,000 a ton. Uh, it's basically gone up about 400%. Now, why the bulk of that has got, why it has gone up so much is because it is trading like, purely like a commodity should. When there's dramatic demand increases and not enough supply, uh, you get a supply crunch. And that is what the, um, the market is pricing in on the price of lithium. Why that is happening is it, 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 there's practically not a day goes by that you don't hear more about car makers that are moving into the electric car uh, in a big way. Um, and uh, I, I keep asking myself, well, where are they going to get all that lithium from? Because if you look at the supply side, uh, there has not been since about 20, 2017 or so, I started hearing a lot about the, the mines in production were going to increase production, and none of that has happened while this powerful demand keeps on growing and growing. And one trend that I'm seeing on the demand side is that all the estimates by the experts out there keep proving to be uh, conservative. So the demand is actually growing at much stronger pace than the, the even most bullish estimates uh, are predicting. On the other hand, on the supply side, there hasn't been very increases in production while this uh, demand growth is happening. And if you look at the pipeline, the key producers right now are your bond deposits in the, the Lithium Triangle, uh, uh, Peru, or sorry, Chile, uh, Argentina, and Bolivia. Bolivia's, you know, it's a, it's, it's a basket case of a country uh, I doubt that uh, that there's going to be much uh, growth there. They want to, um, you know, have it all under the control of the government. Governments are not very good producers. Uh, but then you look in the more mature markets like Chile. Chile's having its problems. They've made a big move to the left, and um, you know, permitting is getting difficult. Um, um, it's all up in the Atacama Desert where water is a big problem. It's very, it's one of the driest parts of the world. Uh, and uh, there's local communities there that need the water as well as the miners. So I think that it's going to stay constrained in Chile. There's parts of Argentina that might start kicking up some production, but that's not been happening in any big way either. Then the other source is your hard rock sources, like in Australia. And in Australia, you know, hard rock tends to be high grade underground mines. So, you know, you can't really bring up huge production numbers. And I believe that all of that production is ultimately going to end up in China, where they're also going through an electric car revolution. 
And uh, they're going to need a lot of batteries, not just for the Chinese market, but for their battery production for uh, batteries that go outside of that country. So really for North America and Europe, a lot of that's going to have to come from uh, South America, which is not um, going through that big of production increases. So um, where I see uh, the, the next big source of um, uh, lithium is what's called unconventional. Uh, and those are your clay deposits. Um, your, but there are some limitations to clay deposits as well in that um, the, they need a lot of water and most of the processing methods require the use of a lot of toxic chemicals to get the lithium out of that clay. So now I'm gonna to transition to talk about um, uh, advanced lithium. We're focused in Mexico, which is a very short distance with trains and, and well uh, supply chains that will, can go to the uh, manufacturers in not just in, in America, but there's also a lot of car manufacturing that happens here in Mexico. So as those, uh, th those markets change to electric vehicles, Mexico is a great uh, potential source. Um, most of the deposits in Mexico and all of the deposits that are owned by Advanced Lithium are in clay deposits. So we have a series of 13 um, Solars. These are salt lakes that are enriched with lithium in the clays. Uh, and we're taking a two-pronged approach about it. Yes, we have these deposits of lithium in the salt lakes, but they're in clay deposits. And so while we started moving into acquiring these lithium um, salt lakes in the first quarter of 2021, we also have been working with one of the local universities that has a brilliant um, uh, um, uh, engineer, chemical engineer uh, that runs this university not very far from where all of our solars are located. And um, he's an expert at recovery of um, minerals. Uh, in the past, he's worked with some of the major mining companies of uh, Mexico. Um, one in particular had some real uh, difficult challenges with their silver recovery. And he solved that problem for them where they were only getting about 50% of their um, silver out of one of their mines, brought it up to over 80%. This guy knows what he's doing when it comes to mineral, um, mineral recovery. And he approached me a number of years ago and said, well, I think I have a method to get the lithium out of your salt lakes. And in 2021, uh, I think around the third quarter, he, uh, he patented a method that is quite a brilliant method of um, um, using electrical re uh, recovery to uh, pull out the lithium and the potassium from the clay material. And then what you're left with after that electrical process is water, um, lithium and potassium. So then you take that and you put it through an organic compound uh, and you're, you, you bring out the water that can be recycled over and over again and you're left with lithium and potassium. And you can do this multiple times, so you get an enriched concentrate of high-grade lithium and potassium. Um, and I hope it's not lost on people that, well, lithium is also doing very well. A lot of the fertilizer um, material, um, minerals are also doing very well. And we, uh, here in Mexico, um, the central part of the country is the um, uh, one of the key farming districts of the country. And they have to, imp there's no domestic production. They have to import all of their 
um, potassium to the farmers. So it's mostly the uh, largest farmers that can afford that imported potassium. Um, uh, there's a lot of lo small farmers that can't use potassium, but they need it and, because it's expensive when you got to import it. And those farmers are a big voting uh, block. Uh, and so I think that that potential for domestic potassium production um, will not only help the, the economics of our lithium production, but it'll help in the permitting of uh, mining of the lithium and the potassium. So some of the um, things that we have ahead of us are, um, we're gonna start doing some drilling, uh, possibly starting with auger drilling to get down in the first, we've done some limited drilling at the right at the surface. And at the surface, we have grades of, uh, you know, anywhere from 100 ppm of lithium uh, up to uh, six, 700 ppm. And when you convert that to lithium carbonate equivalent, you multiply that grade by five times to get the lithium carbonate equivalent grade. <coughs> and these numbers I'm talking about start right at, literally right at the surface. So you can start digging up sam bulk samples and, We'll start with some auger drilling. The, the deeper drilling will um, be after the auger drilling that we're planning on doing, followed by the bulk sampling. Um, what we're going to do with that material that we generate from the auger drilling and the, uh, the diamond drilling is we're going to send that to the lab run by Dr. Uh, Garibe, Perez Garibe in the university not far from them. And what we want to show from that, from that work is we want to run, we will send part of the material to uh, Canadian labs to get sort of a baseline grade. And then we'll send it through this processing method that Dr. Perez Garibay invented and uh, show the ease of um, uh, recovery and the recovery grades. And then we'll send the result of that off for purity testing. So we have a lot of work ahead of us. Once we get that work done, then we'll look at bulk sampling and, um, and then working towards mining operations. I can say that because we know that there's grade there. We know that there's lots of material there. Now we wanna prove that we can get out of there cheaply and uh, be uh, the potential for a low cost producer of lithium. Now, before I close, I wanna go back to that unconventional um, comment. In the past, there has been, when you look at gold production, there has been some, the, the big um, unconventional source is in Nevada. It used to be called no -seum gold. Then they came up with heap leaching about 40, 45, 50 years ago. And that made what was considered too low of a grade to mine into some of the most prolific mining in the, in the world. And that was, an, let's call it an unconventional source of gold that you know everybody knows Nevada is a major producer and it's because of the heap leaching that, um, that enabled that to happen. We've seen it also in copper. Um, copper, there's a lot of copper deposits in porphyries around the world that until Electro winning came along was considered too low grade to be mineable. And basically what Electro winning does is similar to what we're looking at doing with lithium in that, um, it, the electrical um, recovery le bring, takes out, extracts all the copper into like an electric um, attraction and you're left with these sheets of pure copper. And um, 
when Electra winning came along, that turned what was considered unconventional uh, mining in copper into where we get our copper from today. That also is helping with the electrical vehicle revolution. Um, the copper again is very similar to uh, to go uh, to lithium in that there has not been enough exploration and development to meet the demands of the uh, the electric vehicle revolution, and that's bringing uh, the price of copper up quite dramatically. It's only about ten percent from its all time high, and I think it's about to start making some new highs. So gold and co copper went through these technological uh, advancements that made what was considered un unconventional and not mineable into major sources of gold and copper. And what makes our process a little bit different than Electra winning with copper is that we're not trying to use the electrical uh, process to attract the, uh, the, uh, the mineral. In this case, we're attracting everything but the lithium and potassium. And then we're left, left with a concentrate of water, lithium and potassium. Then we put that through an organic uh, compound to get the final production of our extraction of the lithium and potassium out of the water and then recycle and reuse that water over and over again. And I think just like in gold and copper, these unconventional sources of lithium are going to be extremely important in the future. Um, with all of this demand, you know, over the next five years, you start looking out at 10, 15 years, 20 years into the future, and there just is not enough production coming from the conventional sources of lithium these uh, brine deposits in the Atacama Desert or the high-grade high, high underground hard rock deposits. So the unconventional sources are going to have to um, uh, become important as well. And I think that what's going to unlock that is new technology. And so when I get back to our two-pronged approach, we're approaching it from having the uh, potential for mines and having the access to and rights to use this new technology developed by a, a brilliant uh, mineral, ex mineral recovery expert. And so, and that's in an area where you're close to America, you're close to production in Mexico, uh, and um, I think that all things combined, that makes uh, advanced lithium a very compelling story, yet we have under a around a four or five million dollar valuation. I think we're really an undiscovered gem. I invite you to do your homework, go to advancedlithiumcorp.com. We have images of Google Earth images of all of our solars. We have the near surface grades that we have uh, done from sampling on those solars, and we're about to roll up our sleeves and get uh, taking uh, larger samples and running them through this new technology. So uh, stay tuned for more news from us. Do your homework, check out our website, and uh, I think you'll be impressed with what we're putting together. We've only been at it for about a year now, not even a year now. Uh, and in that short period of time, we've acquired a, a large series of Solars. Uh, we're involved with this new technology, and now we're about to roll up our sleeves and get testing more thoroughly, running it through this new technology. And as, I, as we break through milestones, we start to catch up. I think we'll start to catch up to a lot of our peers. And if you look at our peers in the lithium space, a lot of them have a hundred, two, three, half a billion dollar valuations, billion dollar plus. And I think we're gonna to start to move into that category. So uh, as I said, do your homework at advancedlithiumcorp.com and stay tuned for more news. Have a great day. 
We'll talk to you soon.